Hello, I'm John D, and this is Bushfire Science. It's a series where we look at the science behind climate change and bushfires. In this episode, we'll look at the way in which Australia manages its forests and how that affects fire behaviour. To discuss that today, we're talking to Professor David Lindenmayer. He's one of the main experts in fire, logging and landscapes in Australia. And I'm glad to say that he's with us now. Uh, good morning, Professor. Thanks for joining us. Good morning, John. Let's start by uh, talking about logging and its impact on forests. You know the topic well. You've spoken at logging conferences. Does logging make our forests more flammable? You say it does. In what way does it do that? Well, the evidence is clear that logging makes forests more flammable. Several peer-reviewed studies show that quite convincingly, and there are several reasons why logging makes forests more flammable. The first is that it dries out the soils. The second is that the logging slash that's in the forest, the tree heads, the lateral branches, the bark, all adds to the fuel load. The third thing that happens is that the many, many saplings that are growing up in the forest also adds to the fuel load. And the fourth thing is that the changes in the microclimate in the forest means that there's an increase in wind speed, and that is a serious problem on extreme fire days. The evidence is compelling that logging makes forests more flammable. Professor, there are some people who argue that logging forest reduces the fuel load and the fire risk. Surely that seems to be a reasonable conclusion to draw. I can understand why people think that, but the evidence is the opposite. Logging actually increases the fuel load in forests. And there are two key reasons for that. The first one is that logging only takes out the main trunk of the tree. The branches, the crowns, the bark is all left in the forest, along with the other parts of the forest that is left as waste. And that adds enormously to the fuel load. The second thing that happens is that all the very young saplings that are growing up rapidly also adds enormously to the fuel load. Fuel loads are much higher in young logged forests. That's why they're more flammable and more prone to high severity fire. So are you saying that older trees, uh, like old growth forest, uh, burn less severely during a fire? Are there any uh, examples that back that up? So there's compelling evidence that the lowest severity fires are in the oldest forests. The oldest forests are where it's wetter and it's cooler. And there are good examples of the effect of this from fires, particularly the 2009 Murrindindi Black Saturday fires, where the fire burnt at very high intensity and severity in young forests and then became a cooler surfaced fire in old growth forest. So the relationships between fire severity and forest age are compelling. In summary, are you saying that the best thing to do from a fire risk point of view is actually to leave the older forests alone? Yes, it is. The scientific evidence clearly shows that to reduce the fire risk and to reduce the flammability of the forest, we need to protect existing old forest and grow young forest through to as old as possible. This will reduce the fire severity and will reduce the flammability. Professor, thanks for joining us. We appreciate your time. Thank you, John. It's a pleasure. Now, if you want more information on the science behind climate change and bushfires, visit the website at bushfirefacts.org. I'm John Dee, and that was Bushfire Science. Thanks for joining us.